So my name is Joran Mandik. I am an urban designer and urban planner by training um, and have been a member of the floating as well since 2018, so since it started. And uh, my involvement with it now is that I am a producer, which basically means looking at our budget a lot. I look at Excel, you know, turns out I like that too. Uh, I also host a lot, external program, but you'll understand what all of that means a little bit later. You go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My name is Jan astrup and I'm also part of Floating since the beginning, so since 2018. I am a trained architect, and I work mostly at the intersection of performance and um, urban practices, and I think this whole um, unites into Floating University, so I'm really happy that we are uh, invited tonight to present this special place. I hope you get a kind of a feeling after an hour of us talking about like of what it means to float or to be there. Therefore, I would um, suggest we dive into it. I have one question before oh, yeah. we start. One question. Uh, Prague is not too far from Berlin, so maybe it's worth asking, has, has anyone been to floating before? Wow. Two. Two people? Out of 120 plus? Three, four. Three. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can do better. Two people plus two shy people? Uh, very good. Also, does anyone know how to do full screen on this? It's fine, no? I mean, does anyone know how to do full screen on this? It's a real question to the audience. Yeah, do you know? How full to, screen? How to make this full screen? Like, I don't know. Wait, this looks promising. And the sound. Wait. Control. First we okay. Full screen mode, how about this? But anyway, we need to get out of that again. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> a good try. So we'd like to start tonight with um, something that's maybe a bit unusual, seeing the quite classical setting we're in. So this is super frontal. And we'll ask you now to either close your eyes or lean back in your seat. We're taking you into a soundscape of Floating University. This will last about two minutes. So it's, it's quite long, but um, that's what it takes to really arrive. And that's, I think, quite necessary when... There's a motto at Floating that you can see here. Only yeah. here can you be here. So we're not there right now, but um, hopefully you listening to this soundscape for a couple of minutes will ground you a little bit more. So feel invited to close your eyes. We'll do that too and uh, be transported to Berlin in June this year.
Okay, welcome. We've arrived. Um, maybe we can ask you, did anyone hear anything? <laughs> quick, quick show of hands if you have an idea. What did we hear? I know it's scary. There's 120 people in the room. Crows or ravens? It's crows, in fact, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Maybe some swallows. Right, we also had some noise. Last time I, I did this exercise with, with another group, they thought it was a street, but actually it's just a little rolly wagon that we transport heavy stuff with. So uh, you couldn't hear, the, couldn't hear any cars. And I think that soundscape is a little bit different to uh, this university here at least while we're inside. Um, take it away. Yeah, so only here you can be here. Now you're halfway there, I'd say. And to situate a bit where floating actually lies, it's um, in Berlin. And more precisely, really next to the tem former um, temple of Airfield. So probably you've heard about it, and if not, it's not, um, it's okay. But um, just so you know, Floating University is um, obviously marked with this red circle and what you see this big um, surface is the what used to be an airfield until, two, until 2008. Now this is what Tempelhof looks like. It's one of the biggest um, inner city green park in Europe so it's quite of an impressive place to visit. I really recommend. And um, so this is kind of the attention catcher and now we have floating university which is a very small drop of water on the map on the north and what it does it's actually a rainwater retention pond which means it's a fully functioning infrastructure of a city and it's one that you can find in many cities you can also find many of them in Berlin but the one we're speaking of is there to collect the rainwater that falls onto the roof of this former airport building, which is one of the longest buildings in Europe. So it's quite a big amount of rainwater at once, and of the nearby streets and of the neighborhood. And so it's a storm basin, which means the water is collected and then um, eventually flows further into the, um, into the canal and into the Spree River. So let's see, say now we take the water journey. Um, you just fall, you know, like any rainwater drop. And then with everything you can catch on the road or onto this like old, maybe decaying roof of the buildings, everything you take with you. So it can be like cigarette butts or just tires, dust from the road or plastic, microplastic. All of this you take with you through underground uh, sewage system. And eventually you arrive after about two and a half kilometers at Floating University. So what you see here are a few kids from our um, kids program and some uh, floating association member. And this is how it looked like when uh, floating first, or when the basin first was discovered, let's say in 2017. Um, it's quite of a, something you wouldn't say is only like an infrastructure, something happened in between, right? So there was water and now there's much more than water. There's also uh, an entire um, ecosystem. Looking uh, from the bird view again, that's in the 40s. So the, the basin was built in the 30s. So in the 30s, 40s, it looked like this. And then it remained quite unchanged. We see a few uh, sports fields around and then it remains, it remains quite similar. You can see that its surface is quite plain, like it looks only like asphalt. And then slowly, 2010s, 2012, 2014, we see the beginning of what seems to be a, a biotope, a reed bed, what will become at some point the biggest reed bed in um, Kreuzberg. Reed, I'm not sure if it's something you're familiar with, it's like this long grass that um, grows in wetland or in wet habitat. I don't know the name in other languages, but let's say read. Um, and this is really linked with the fact that the airport actually closed in 2008. And this being an infrastructure linked to the airport, it somehow um, went off the radar after a few years. And it developed, it developed, it developed until 2018, when um, let's say it reached one of its earliest peak and uh, Floating University landed as well. 
So it landed like this in 2018. It was a project started by Raumlabor. It had, I think, uh, quite a good resonance. We had.